Hi, your 12 is Mr. Lim here, and we're going to go through the 2019 Waste Exams All Be Organic questions. Okay, so this one here is about the uh, alpha amino acids, and the alpha part is the important part because I think all of these are amino acids, but not all of them are alpha amino acids. And what's the definition of alpha amino acid? It's just making sure that you recognize is that the carboxylic acid and the uh, amine group are joined to the same one. So let's have a look. Uh, amine group, carboxylic acid, joined to the same one, yes, A, right, carboxylic acid, amine, not joined to the same one, carboxylic acid, amine, not joined to the same one, and there's no carbo oh, there's carboxylic acid and amine not joined to the same one. All right, so that's the definition of an alpha amino acid, and so that's why you, uh, you need to know all of these little bits and pieces. All right. Uh, which of the following properties exhibited by octanol is not related to the dispersion forces of the molecule? So dispersion forces are related to physical properties. Which one's a physical property? Well, you got your solubilities, yes, and your melting points. So therefore, it is combustibility, right? Which is not really related to the um, dispersion forces. It's more related to the way that the uh, atoms are arranged. Okay, so physical properties, melting, boiling point, solubility, and vapor pressure. All right. Okay, so the next one, make sure you are reading the question because it says not exhibit geometric isomerism. Okay, so you look for one that won't exhibit geometric isomerism and you should recognize that if the substance has something on the same one, it's probably not going to have geometric isomerism, especially that's, that's where the double bond is. I would also just suggest drawing it all out, just making sure. So as soon as you see that, you should know that that's not going to have geometric isomerism. Okay, but all the others do. Uh, you can draw them all out. I would really suggest drawing them all out and then you can check them all. Okay, this one's a bit interesting. This one here, right? 1, 2 difluoro, 2 butene. So here's your double bond. It's a 2 butene. So you have this one here and you have uh, this one here. 1, 2 difluoro. So, oops, okay. So that means one of the fluoros is going to be here and the other fluoro is going to be here and then this is going to be a hydrogen, right? Does this ge exhibit geometric isomerism? Yes, it does, kind of. All right, so what happens is that what it's effectively saying is that there's a carbon here and a carbon here, and it will be different if it uh, was uh, cis or trans isomerism, okay? So generally, I say that if there's four different things, it doesn't have geometric isomerism, but that's not always right, uh, especially considering these two are connected to carbons there. All right, um, and then the other one would also have geometric isomerism as well. All right, so draw them all out. Uh, which of the following could not be a product of when propan one L is oxidized? Okay, so just remember, oxidation can also include combustion. So propanol can burn, propanol can turn into propanol, and propanol can turn into propanol, uh, propanoic oxide. Uh, sorry, propanoic acid. And then this one here is propanol. No, propanol. Propanone. This one here is propanone, and that's made from propan two O. So it's therefore D. Right. Um, between which of the following pairs of substances can dispersion forces exist? Dispersion exists everywhere, so therefore it's all of them, okay? Even with ionic substances and metallic substances, you're going to still have dispersion forces. Uh, which of the following is an isomer of pentanoic acid? Okay, so this is a low uh, average. You've just got to make sure that you are able to look at pentanoic acid and work out what it is. So pentanoic acid, I'd draw it out. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, one, two, there, so then you can work out how, well, there's no hydrogen there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten hydrogens, okay, so ten hydrogens, so it's C5H10O2, okay, then you can count them out, one, two, three, four, five, or you can count out all the hydrogens and oxygens, uh, and the answer is, the one that is a, a isomer is this one here, apparently, let me check that. One, two, three, four, five, two, four, six, eight, nine, ten, and one, two. So that is an isomer of pentanoic acid. All right, all the others are not. Um, okay, uh, let's have a look at the next one. Um, how many isomers does the compound C2H3Br3 have? 53%, so that's not a lot, so it was a more difficult question, let's think. C2 makes it nice and easy. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six positions to fill with hydrogens and bromines. You can have the bromines all on the first one, right? Or you can have the bromines two on the first one, one on the second one, or you can have 
a bromine, one bromine on the first one and two bromines on the second one. Wait a minute, isn't this the exact same thing as that? Yes, it is. So therefore, there's only two possible isomers. Uh, it's either going to be 111 or 112. All right, those are the only two isomers that you can have of tribromoethane. All right. Um, uh, something unique about this exam is that there was a lot of uh, marks associated with um, the multiple choice on this organics and then less in the other areas, but you know, that's just the way it is. Okay, so this one was an interesting question. It was an empirical formula and it was done fairly straightforwardly. What what did get a lot of people was that they miss a lot of students missed out the oxygen. And you're reading this to say, okay, well, why would they miss out the oxygen? All right, considering it tells you there right there, but this particular part, this part here was on another page. And this was just another portion of the question. So if this, if all you got was the start of the page with this part here, yeah, maybe you might miss out the oxygen. So you've also got to think about, okay, well, you've got nice percentages here, convert that into a percentage that's fairly straightforward. And then what you should really do is check that you've got 100% across all of them. And what you would have realized is that, hey, that's not 100%. And then you would have thought, oh my God, I've done something wrong. And then you would have looked at it a little bit more deeply. And then you would have found that missing oxygen. Okay. And therefore you would have gotten the correct answer. Um, the empirical formula, you can guys can do it. It's C6H7ASNClO. So one of each of the other elements and then a C6H7. Right. Next. Um, okay, so this was done reasonably well. That's what they said. Okay, so what's uh, write the structural formula showing the bonds between the carbon atoms. So, okay, pentuene, uh, one, the second one has the double bond two, three, four, five, and then you should really put in the hydrogens around everything. I'm going to be too lazy to do it, but you know that there needs to go hydrogens on there. Don't just draw uh, the little lines and expect to get marks. You have to draw all the hydrogens in. All right. Um, structural formula of organic product when it reacts with the BR2. It's fairly straightforward. Uh, you have remember that this is an addition reaction, and so therefore all the BRs are going to go there. Oops. And the other hydrogen is going to go everywhere else. Okay, um, does it matter that I've drawn a, uh, a cis trans there and I've drawn a trans version of it um, and then I don't have these in a trans version? No, it does not because remember that this bond here can rotate. So as soon as you make it an alkane, they're going to rotate around so it doesn't, you're not going to have cis trans isomerism there. What's the name of this product? It should be 2,3-dibromopentane. So please make sure you know how to name these things. It is quite important. Um, ethanol. That's an aldehyde. So one, two, there. One, two, three, there. Okay. Re reacts with the uh, potassium permanganate and acid. Okay. So it's acidified potassium permanganate. It's only going to go undergoing going to undergo oxidation. So therefore, you should make a carboxylic acid. Right. And the name of that ethanoic acid. Ethanoic acid, nice and easy. Okay. Um, butanoic acid, yeah, we got this one, two, three, four, one, two, da, 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 and then you got all your hydrogens there. Okay. Uh, reacts with the Na2CO3, so this is an acid plus a base, so the structure of the or formula of the organic product. So you should recognize that it's going to lose its hydrogen because it's going to donate that hydrogen and you should show that the charge remember that the charge has to be on the oxygen there okay drawing all of your hydrogens i'm not going to but this is a butanoate ion okay i guess you could have answered sodium butanoate but that's not really um but i think both of the answers were acceptable all right uh, okay, another contributor for potential imbalance of blood pH is formation of lactic acid, which is called 2-hydroxypropanoic acid. Okay, so hydroxy being the prefix for alcohols and oic acid being the suffix for carboxylic acids. You have an alcohol and a carboxylic acid, so it's a propanoic acid. Okay, okay. which carbon is number one? The carbon that has the carboxylic acid is the number one, so therefore that's that. You put the alcohol on the second carbon. Make sure that you um, put it where uh, with the line pointing towards the O, not towards the H. Then put in all of your other bonds. 
Then you count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens. Everything's good. All right. And then, oh, make sure you read the question and circled um, and labeled. All right. All functional groups. So where's the functional group here? It's with the carbon there. And this is the carboxylic acid. Okay, so that's what it means by uh, functional groups labeled, not just like, oh, that's the propanoic acid. No. Okay. And then the alcohol is just this bit. The carbon is not part of the alcohol. That's wrong. So therefore, it's just the alcohol bit. Right. And that's the alcohol. Do you need to say that it's a primary, secondary, or tertiary? No, but it is a secondary alcohol. All right. And then... The monomer methyl, uh, methyl, methyl acrate can be formed from the esterification of methanol and methyl acrylic acid. The structure of methyl methacrylate is shown below. Write the balance equation for the esterification of the methanol and the methyl methacrylic acid. Show the full structural formula of each species in the equation. So you've got to draw the full structural formula, which means you've got to draw it out. So you've got one of them, so you can just draw that one out. That's a double bond. That's a double bond. That's the S. Okay, wait, whoops. So this is an ester, and you need to work out what the uh, two component parts are. So which side is the R, which side is the R dash? This is the R, this is the R dash. That's the alcohol side. So if we're drawing the um, components that you need to make, this is the carboxylic acid. Okay, so that's a pro yep, propenoic acid, yep. Um, there's your uh, one part of the ester. What's the other part of the ester? It's the R dash group, which is the CH3. Is it just CH3? But no, it's an alcohol. It's methanol. Okay, so there's your methanol. And will I get marks for this? No, because I haven't followed the instructions. It wants full structural formula. How do you draw a methanol? Apparently, some people found it hard. That's the full methanol. All right. Um, do I need to show the bond between the O and the H? Uh, better, just in case. All right. And then, um, don't forget the H2SO4. And then, it's because it's a full balanced equation, you've got to start drawing out all the other stuff as well. Uh, H2C, double O, O, C, H3. Okay, so that's the uh, equation for that. And uh, that's it for now. Uh, you are going to watch this and then do well in your test. Adios.